Hi everyone, welcome to another weekly Forex forecast for the week ending August 14th, 2020. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action, and in today's forecast, we're going to talk about the Euro USD, the Pound USD, Gold or XAU USD, and we're going to wrap things up with two cryptocurrencies, Ethereum and VeChain. I've talked about both of these over the recent months, and they're both up huge. However, I do think they're going much higher than this over the next few weeks and even couple of years. All right, so let's get to it right now. Quick disclaimer that today's video is for educational purposes only. All views are my opinion and are not intended as investment advice. Forex is a high reward, high risk business, and you should not trade with borrowed money or money you cannot afford to lose. See the description of this video for the full disclaimer. So first up, we have the Euro USD. And as you can see, after retesting that 119 resistance area last week, we did get a pullback on Friday back into that 117.80 area. So 117.80 is gonna be the support level for the week ahead. You can see where it's been a little bit choppy through here. However, I do think it's gonna play somewhat of a role, but the bigger level here is 117 in my opinion, and especially 116. All right, so this area between here is actually the location of that multi-year pattern that we've been talking about for months. So if I move out to the monthly time frame, you can see where the Euro USD is still trading above the top of that multi-year wedge. So this top extends from the all-time highs back here and 116 to 117, somewhere right in the middle around 116.50 is going to be critical support. That's the area that buyers have to hold the pair above in order to keep this constructive. If of course we see the Euro USD trade below that area and close below the 116 area, it could indicate that this up here is a false break. All right, so moving back to the daily time frame, essentially what I'm looking for is I do think that we could see more consolidation between 119 and perhaps 117, maybe even 116. But all in all, as long as we see the euro hold above that 116 area on a daily closing basis, I do think that the euro could move higher. Now it's gonna take a daily close above the 119 resistance area to expose 12090. All right, so that's gonna be the next key resistance level if we do see a daily close above that 119 area. But if you aren't in this one yet, all of this through here again is just consolidation after this run up we've seen recently. So although you could look to buy on dips, just be careful here knowing that we could get several days or even weeks of consolidation and we could also get a further pullback into that 116 area. So I'm still long here from 112.99. I got long following this breakout back here that I talked about in the blog where we had this rally consolidation into a bull flag and then we had a breakout into this area and I was scaling in around 113. So I may look to add to that position a little bit if we do get a pullback into some of these support levels and also things stay constructive. That's gonna be key here. If we start to see an accelerated decline into 117 and perhaps 116, that could indicate that 116 may not hold as support. All right, so it's all gonna depend on what kind of price action we get between 116 and 119 over the coming days. So similar to the Euro USD, the pound is finding some resistance around 130.160. So this is the confluence of resistance that I mentioned last week. And as you can see, we consolidated below it last week a little bit, but we weren't able to get through it. So going forward, again, similar to the Euro USD, it's likely that we're going to get some more consolidation up here until we see either a break higher or lower from the pound. Now, if we do break below 129.60 or so, I would expect to pull back into the 128 area. Notice how 128 served as resistance back here. So therefore, if we do get a deeper pullback from the pound into 128, I would look to that area to see what type of price action develops. Now, alternatively, if we do see a daily close above this 131.60 area, that could expose 135. I talked about this last week, but notice how 135 was the top of this candle back here. And I do think that 131.60 could become the trigger for a move higher. In other words, if we do see a daily close above it, that could indicate that we're gonna get a push up into 135 over the coming weeks. Now, as far as 129.60, you can see back here where 129.60 served as resistance. It then flipped to support through this area. Now, there are some false breaks like this one back here, and it got choppy through this area. However, I still think that 129.60 could play a role over the coming days. Notice too how recently this candle right here found support right around that 129.60 to 129.70 area. So even though the uptrend, the short-term uptrend is intact here, you've gotta be careful trying to buy the pound as long as it's below 131.60. 
The only way buying the pound makes sense in my opinion is to wait for a pullback into 129.60 followed by some type of price action or ideally even a pullback into 128. That would give you enough room between that 131.60 area and your entry for that to make sense. Otherwise, in my opinion, it may be best to wait for a break above 131.60 before looking to buy the pound. Now, if we do see it close below 128 over the coming days and weeks, that could indicate weakness and a further rotation lower. But for now, as long as this short-term uptrend is intact, I do like the idea of looking for bullish price action from support or a daily close above 131.60 to get long. So gold or XAU USD in this case is showing some signs of weakness following Friday's bearish engulfing day. So if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I was buying the gold miners back here in April and I told members about this. Those miners are up well over 100% as of today. And I do think that there's a lot more in store. So we obviously saw the break above all-time highs or at least previous all-time highs around that $1,900 area. We also saw a break above 2000 So this bearish engulfing day on Friday does hint at a pullback from gold, perhaps into 2000 Maybe we get something deeper all the way back here to retest the $1,900 area. But I continue to like the idea of buying dips on gold because I do think that we're in a cyclical bull market that could last for another five years. So any pullback into 2000 or $1,900 area could offer a buying opportunity. Of course, I'm not trading gold. I'm investing in it via the gold miners. So to me, whether we pull back to 2000 or $1,900 isn't really a big deal. What matters to me is the trajectory over the next few years. And when we look at the monthly time frame, I think it becomes really clear as to where gold is going. This is clearly a breakout of all time highs. And this is why I think that gold is going much higher. So even though we could see some near term weakness, Again, as long as that $1,900 area is intact as support, I like the idea of buying dips here. So $2,000 is going to be near-term support. $2,100 is going to be resistance with a close above that taking us to $2,200. But again, if we do get a daily close below $2,000, look for a deeper pullback into that $1,900 area, which was the previous all-time high. This area through here is now a must-hold support level. So Ethereum or ETH USD is something I've been talking about now for months. I mentioned this back on the blog when ETH was trading around $230. So the pair had just broken out of this long-term descending wedge pattern that actually illustrates the entire bear market following the bull market back here in 2016 and 2017. So we had this bull market, we then had years of consolidation and Ethereum then broke out around that 200 to $230 area. Now I got long back here and I'm still long. I'm not going to sell any ETH for a very long time. And as you can see, this has already been about a 70% gain. But as for key levels to keep an eye on, I do think that that $350 area is going to be a critical one over the coming days. So I mentioned this the other day on the blog where 350 served as resistance back here, support through this area, and then resistance once again. Now, with ETH above 350 on a daily and weekly closing basis, that area should start to serve as new support. And I do think that a short-term level is going to be $800. I think that Ethereum could hit that area this year, in fact. But first, if we look at the one-hour time frame, you can see something similar to what happened a few weeks ago. So there was a smaller wedge pattern that developed here on the one-hour time frame. And I actually told members about this when Ethereum was trading right through this area. So I talked about it right when it was breaking out. And as you can see, this was an incredible rally following that breakout. Now, this was a much smaller pattern than what we have developing now. So as you can see, we have another wedge pattern that's forming here on the intraday timeframes. So to me, this looks healthy, and especially the fact that it's occurring above that $350 to $360 area. Remember, that's gonna be the key support going forward. So as long as we see ETH continue to consolidate in this constructive fashion, I do like the idea of a push higher over the coming days and weeks. Now, one other thing I will point out is if we look at the daily time frame, this $400 area is going to be critical because even though we've seen intraday spikes above it, if I draw a horizontal level at $400, notice how Ethereum has not been above that area on a daily closing basis yet. So not only do we need a close above this wedge top, but we also need a daily close above $400. I think if we get that, 
we're on to $500, perhaps 550. I think that the $500 area could serve as resistance simply because it's a big round number, but a break above $400 would likely send Ethereum up toward 500, maybe 550. But just looking at the weekly time frame, I don't think that there's any real key resistance until that $800 area. Notice back here a few years ago how $800 served as a pivot where it was resistance back here, it then served as support, and then resistance once again. So basically to summarize, a daily close above $400 would expose the 500 to 550 area followed by $800. And I'm so long here from that $230 area and I'll be holding this one for at least the next 18 months. Last but not least, we have VeChain or VETUSD. So I was talking about VeChain ever since it was consolidating within this wedge pattern back here in June. So I started talking about this in the members forums and I was actually buying VeChain between 0.008 and 0.009. We then had this massive breakout back here that took the pair 150% higher. Now, ever since it reached that two cent area, we've seen again consolidation into this wedge pattern. And this should look pretty familiar to the Ethereum chart we just looked at where we had this previous wedge that triggered a breakout and we've then had consolidation and recently we've broken out again. So I've been talking about this in the members area. I've also been talking about it on Twitter a ton and so far it's playing out perfectly. All right, now one thing I talked about on Twitter yesterday was the fact that we had a close above the two cent mark. So this close on Saturday above two cents was the first time since 2018. Notice how back here we never did close above two cents. So that close above two pennies takes us, in my opinion, up to the 0.026 to 0.028 area. Now, this is the all-time high for VET. Then, which is the coin that preceded VET, was above 2.8 cents. However, VET has never been above that area. So in my opinion, once we get above this area, just below three cents, that's when we get what's called a blue sky breakout, where we could see four cents, five cents, six cents, et cetera, rather quickly. However, I do think that this area between 0.026 and 0.028 is going to attract a lot of sellers. That said, I haven't sold any VET from down here at 0.008 and I don't plan to anytime soon. So far I'm up 160% and while that sounds incredible, I still think that VET goes much higher over the next 18 months. So essentially moving forward, that two cent mark becomes support, the area between 0.026 and 0.028 becomes resistance, with a close above that taking us to four cents, five cents, et cetera. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.